I'm in the mood for bargain bag simply because I've got some funny but since I've got some I'm in the mood for bargain bag Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I am in the mood for Bargain Bag today. Uh, it's been a strange week or so. I've been in the mood to do the more low prep videos, the videos that don't require a whole lot of planning and scripting and thinking ahead. Uh, those, The two that most fit into that category are, of course, Bargain Bag and the one that you just saw, Playlist. Uh, so yeah, it, it's the week for those videos and uh, it's one reason why I like doing those kind of features every month is because, yeah, don't have to use the old noodle very much. But anyway, yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags, seven discs each, from the Late Skips Records and CD World. And in between opening the two Bargain Bags, I will uh, talk about a CD that I have found or that you may be likely to find in the CD bargain section of a store near you. Not a lot of stores are open for browsing right now, but uh, hey, when they're back open for browsing, you might find these CDs in uh, your bargain section. Uh, but before I get to any of that, I'm going to quickly go over the CDs that were in last month's bargain bag. And uh, before I forget to mention again, if you are interested in any of these CDs that I'm casting off, uh, just let me know either in uh, the comment section below or in a direct message on Twitter. We can work out an arrangement. I will send them to you. No postage necessary. If you live in the States, if you live outside the States, we might have to uh, come to some sort of a, a an agreement, a payment agreement on postage because Overseas postage is not cheap. And I keep these CDs for about two weeks after the upload date of the video. So yeah, as long as two weeks haven't gone by, these CDs, uh, you could probably consider them still up for grabs. But anyway, going on into these CDs, the first two were uh, decidedly not my thing. They are rap and much more on the gangster rap side of things. At least this first one is Cassidy, I'm a Hustler. Yeah, it's, th it's the edited version, the clean version, but yeah, you know gangster rap sort of hip-hop is just not my thing and neither is maestro clark the 100 percent tapes maxi single yeah uh the next one was the one that i was most disappointed in because i was uh, for some reason i was expecting to like it because of and this is probably a silly reason the cover image it just it looked like he was you know kind of one of those uh light-hearted whimsical interesting to listen to uh kind of singer songwriters uh matt duke is one that uh that this reminded me of and by the way, if you haven't heard Matt Duke, check him out. I will probably be covering him at some point in this channel. And one of the things that I didn't care much for with regard to this was his voice is a little bit higher than I was expecting. And normally, uh, you know, male singers with higher pitched voices don't really bother me all that much. I prefer the lower uh, octave singing voices. Uh, but yeah, this one just didn't care for him for one reason or another. So yeah, sad to say. Because I, I was looking forward to listening to that one, and uh, maybe I just had my expectations too high for it. But uh, anyway, uh, these next few are kind of uh, indie rock type of stuff, or well, rock of different types. Uh, now playing, and this that is the name of the group, so this is their self-titled album. Now playing, uh, indie rock kind of stuff, and uh, the thing that I didn't care for about this album is the song structures and the lyrics seemed pretty uh, elementary you know, not not terribly sophisticated. At least that was the impression that I got when I listened to it. Um, not not that I'm really demanding in terms of really intricate melodies or, uh, vo you know, any profound vocals or anything. It's just that seemed a little too far in the opposite direction, uh, unless it was my mood at the time I was listening to it. I don't know. Which can sometimes uh, be the case with some of these CDs. But anyway, uh, Gloritone is the next one, and this was kind of post-grunge, kind of like mm, Nickelback, I guess, that general area yeah just nothing really you know it, it was okay enough it's just nothing really ear grabbing about it to me and then we have uh thermidor it's another kind of an indie rock kind of thing uh this album is called monkey on rico so apparently the dog's name is rico uh because there's a monkey there's a monkey on his back <laughs> anyway uh and this it was okay again but it was kind of that's the recurring theme with the uh, the cast offs that i have uh, pretty much every month but I'm probably still going to say it anyway. Not my thing. Not my thing. And then we have um, this one. I When I opened it up last month, I could not tell what it was. But uh, the artist's name actually is Tor Olson. 
Uh, and I, for, for some reason, it, it looked like Tor Olson because I couldn't see the space in between the first and last name. But anyway, uh, Tor Olson, and uh, the title of the album is Picture. As you can kind of tell from the cover art, it's a bit leaning toward the New Age kind of stuff, but it is uh, vocal songs. Uh, but yeah, just has a little bit of a, mu a world music kind of a, a thing to it, and uh, little synthesizers and stuff. Yeah. And then we have Blodegird, Song of the Flowers, an anthology of Welsh music and song. So this is, and yes, it is Welsh folk music, basically. So yeah, I don't think, as far as I know, I don't have a drop of Welsh blood in me. So, and, and even if I did, what, I, what can I say? It didn't uh, strike a chord with me, pun intended. Uh, if you are of Welsh descent, and as I said, you know, it, these are cast-offs, so if you want any of them. And the, ne the next in the cast-offs, uh, the, actually the last in the definite cast-offs, next to last in the possible cast-offs, is a group called Freeloaders, and the album is called Northwest Coast. This is kind of uh, EDM kind of stuff. I, I, as I recall, it's all instrumental stuff. EDM trip hop, maybe, sort of. Uh, I like some EDM, but yeah, this could be a little bit repetitive. Uh, it was to me anyway, but if you like EDM instrumental trip hop type of stuff, uh, hit me up, as they say. And then uh, this one I may be keeping. I'm going to give it another listen. Uh, the Cosmic Rough Riders. It was uh, um, Too Close to Sea Far. Interesting title. And yeah, this was uh, kind of indie rock, basically. And uh, they had some good melodies in here. Some, uh, a few catchy, decent, decently catchy hooks in it. And uh, here's a look at the cover without the big obnox obnoxious sticker in the way. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to give this one, as I said, another listener to uh, see if I really want to keep it or not. Uh, but yeah, it, it's 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 worth at least one more listen to my ears. Uh, but yeah, they've made, as I said, they've made several albums, um, and I'm maybe checking them out in more depth later on. And then this one um, looked promising uh, when I opened the bag, and uh, it it pretty much was. Uh, Bertine is the artist's name. She's a Norwegian artist, and uh, Morbid Late Night Show is the name of the album. This was, I believe, her debut album. Um, new Turn of the Millennium Dance Pop, I think it is. Uh, 1999 was when this album came out. So yeah, Turn of the Millennium Dance Pop kind of stuff. Maybe uh, think uh, Robin or... Uh, shoot, what is her name? I can't remember her name. Um, an Aust I believe she's an Australian. Kylie Minogue, I think, is, is uh, who I'm trying to think of. So yeah, kind of along that line. Uh, but, but I'm going to keep this one at least for now and give it a couple more listens because I kind of like the sound of it. And then the one that was uh, probably the that I held the most promise when I looked at it. It looked like I was going to enjoy the most, and it pretty much was. This is a Central Park Summer Stage. This is a live compilation CD of, uh, yeah, all tracks recorded live at Central Park Summer Stage, which was a live concert series in Central Park, New York. And uh, the first one caught my eyes when I read the track list, Ben Folds and Guster. I, I've talked a little bit about Guster before. They're a group that I probably should talk about more in depth uh, later on. Uh, yeah, they do. A, they collaborate on a song together, and after that one, I was kind of disappointed because they had at least I think it was that track. Right after that one, they, you could hear the PA um, announcer on the PA system as the track was fading out. You know, coming up, I think it was Rufus Wainwright was coming up next, and it's like, dang, I could have had a Rufus Wainwright song on the CD too, but they cut it cut it away to the next artist. So I was a little disappointed at that, but uh, but yeah, the rest of the album was it's really good. It's got some Latin stuff, some African flavored stuff, a whole assortment of, of things. And uh, one of the tracks on here that I didn't see when I was glancing over the track list first uh, in the last video was a group called NRBQ, a New Rhythm and Blues Quartet is what NRBQ stands for. And uh, I had a greatest hits sec. Uh, compilation of theirs once. Uh, I thought it was okay, but I ended up not keeping it. But one song that caught my ear on it was called Get Rhythm. And it's just a great, great song. Um, and of all the tracks from that Greatest Hits compilation, they performed that track in a live uh, recording on this on this album. So it's like, yes! That was the one song I was kind of wanting to keep, one to keep that CD for. And it ends up on this set. And after that, Interestingly enough, I realized that it is not an NRBQ original, but it is actually a they, it's a cover of a song originally by Johnny Cash, and that song is actually on my Johnny Cash Essential Johnny Cash compilation. So I've had that song all along, even not keeping the NRBQ CD. I had that song. So uh, yeah, very very good uh, album. Bunch of live recordings on here that are really enjoyable. Lots of different genres. Lots of fun to listen to that one. And then the next keeper is. Um, the lone classical CD in the last assortment. And uh, yeah, imagine that. I'm keeping a classical CD. This is Popular Overtures. 
Uh, and uh, the uh, composer who comprises most of this set is Franz von Suppe, who I did not recognize the name of, but once I heard these comp compositions, uh, I realized, oh yeah. And where I probably heard them uh, first was probably where most people of my generation and probably younger generations got their first um, familiarity with classical music, and that is Looney Tunes cartoons. Weren't those? Didn't you get some of your uh, rudimentary classical listening in Warner Brothers cartoons like I did Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, all that stuff? And yet, I, I still to this day love the Looney Tunes cartoons. I will never outgrow them. I've got three two-disc DVD collections of Looney Tunes stuff. So, and, I, and yes, I watch them semi-regularly. Haven't watched them in a while. I need to put those back in again. But anyway... Uh, that aside, yes, this is an enjoyable uh, set. Uh, yeah, Franz von Suppe, as I said, does uh, four out of the five tracks, and the final track on this set is the William Tell Overture by Rossini, which we all know that uh, it's composition. So, yeah, a fun set of classical tunes that I'm going to keep. And the last keeper out of last month's pair of bargain bags is actually the CD I'm going to talk about as the Spotlight CD in the middle of this video. So we're going to keep that one aside for now until I open the first of two mystery CD grab bags. So let's see what we've got in here. And I'll give you guys the customary peekaboo of the CDs that are in here. And let's take a look. Here we have Northwestern Sunshine, Arms of Mercy. I have a feeling this is uh, Christian music, contemporary Christian. Yes, this album is dedicated to the service of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we put our trust. Okay, I will probably be skipping this one, because as you guys know, nothing against Christian music. It's just its lyrical content is lost on me, not being a Christian myself, a practicing Christian. Anyway. So, then we have... Oh, Northwest of December by Don Latarski. He is actually a, a local musician. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've never actually listened to his stuff before, So, but I am aware of him, so I will have to... Oh, it's a Christmas album, so so this will be... I will be putting this aside for my Christmas listening, and I'll probably, at this rate, I'll be end up, end up making a special bargain bag-ish video out of just the grab bag CDs that I got that are Christmas-themed, so... I guess that will probably be a special edition of Bargain Bag for uh, the end of this year. And we have... I'm sensing a theme with this uh, bag. Karman is, I believe he's a Latin musician, and the album is called Addicted to Jesus. Sometimes there, I find a bit of humor in how uh, high-octane some of these religious CDs are. I, I don't want to make fun of people's faith, but it's just, for some reason, it just strikes me as funny. I don't know. Look down on me at that if you want to. I'm, I apologize. But anyway, yeah. Another one that I will probably not bother to listen to. Then we have the Nelons or Nelons. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, A New Generation is the name of the album. Uh, oh, yeah, I, think we, I think we do have a Christian bag grab bag here so okay maybe Garrett or somebody else is gonna want all of these CDs who knows but yes this is another um, uh, contemporary Christian clap your hands I've been through the blood take off those rags Lazarus when redeemed I stand etc etc so, I have a feeling the listening for this pair of bargain bags is not gonna take very long uh, this is indeed the Christian grab bag I'm going back to the chapel by Buddy Liles, L-I-L-E-S. I assume that's how you pronounce the name. So, yeah. And it's, so, oh, it's it's a double CD. So hey, twice as much Christian music. Lucky me. Sorry. Uh, and then this may very well be another Christian. White River is the name of the uh, artist. I am, I assume. Uh, Rodeo Preacher is the name of the album. So I'm kind of guessing that. Uh, Yep, I Like My Gospel Country is the name of the, uh, one of the tracks. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh yeah, um, manufactured and distributed by Word Incorporated, and I'm pretty sure that Word is a Christian label. So. Wow, I don't have a whole lot to listen to out of this bag, do I? Uh, Quiet Time 1 and 2, a double instrumental worship album. Yes, this was indeed the Christian grab bag. What can I complain about? How inexpensive were these CDs? 
And hey, if any, as I said, if any of you want these CDs out there, but if you want all of these, um, I might have to charge you for shipping because that's going to cost a little bit. It's going to be a bit of a heavy box to send all those CDs in. But still, don't let that scare you. If you want any of these CDs, hit me up. Okay, now on to the Spotlight CD for this month's bargain bag video. And if you have a really good memory, then you uh, know which CD was missing from the rundown at the beginning of this month's video uh, from the reveal of last month's video. And it is a CD by Bobby Gaylor, and uh, it's called Fuzzatonic Scream. And this one, it's really unusual, and uh, it was it's so unusual that it turned me off when I first listened to it a couple weeks ago. Uh, so much so that I almost, actually I think I may have, gone on to the next CD before this one was all the way done. Might have even bef been before it was halfway done. It's just, it was so unexpected from what I was expecting, and I don't know why I was expecting what I was expecting, because I'd never heard of Bobby Gaylor before. But, well, I was I was assuming it was songs, uh, as in the lyrics were sung. But no, this is actually a spoken word album, uh, but it does have musical uh, accompaniment uh, underneath. So, in that respect, it reminds me of, I mean, and I was uh, not even alive yet when this stuff was going on back in the 60s, but it was uh, uh, the Beat Generation, the uh, uh, Beatnik uh, poets, Beat poets that did, you know, spoken word uh, poetry or spoken word essays uh, to the accompaniment of, you know, bongos and acoustic guitar and, or any combination of instruments. Uh, so that's kind of what this um, it reminds me of, but the similarities stop there, just the fact that it's spoken word over music. Uh, Bobby Gaylor is actually, I looked him up online, and he actually was one of the writers on the original run of Roseanne. So uh, with that in mind, you can expect that, and he actually also has a background as a stand-up comic. So yeah, this um, kind of makes sense if when you know that about him. Uh, some of this stuff is comedic uh, essays, spoken word stuff, observational or social commentary stuff, and some of it is uh, stories about his youth, uh, you know, stories from his childhood. And I'm not sure which is which because I really don't know. I haven't yet bothered to look up any sort of biography on Bobby Gaylor. But uh, the, the first track and the one that got the most attention and was actually a, a single, was actually put out to radio, is called Suicide. And yes, that is the subject matter of the track. So um, as you can imagine, it probably it garnered some controversy from what I've read. And um, yeah, it, it probably does. It, it is a turnoff at the beginning, but if you listen to the whole track, he brings up some something interesting. I mean, he, it starts out talking about you know the just the simple fact that humans are the only people who consider suicide. When you think about it, you know, no other species uh, thinks about offing themselves voluntarily. So just an, an interesting. Uh, that's kind of like the germ of the idea. That's where the track starts out. But it really goes on to, as I said, by the end of the track, it really says something interesting. It's an interesting take on the theme of suicide. So, you know, if you start listening to it, give it time, let it play all the way out. Uh, but yeah, these other the other tracks on here, um, uh, there's a, song, a track called Smelt, which is something about fish. I kind of lost, uh, I'll have to listen to it again because that kind of lost me partway through. And uh, Tommy the Frog Killer. That was that was a very interesting one. As I said, I don't know how many of these stories from his life are true stories or if they're just things that he decided to make up uh, as characters or whatever. But uh, if that one is true, a true story from his life, then it's interesting. Uh, let's let me just I'll just put it that way. And then there's another track on here called "Business End of a Gun," which tells us tells the story of uh, him being in a bar when it was held up at gunpoint. See, so, yeah, it's just a lot of interesting stories and tracks and stuff and, and essays, if you will, uh, throughout this album. It's very interesting. And yeah, as I said, it turned me off in a big time way the first time, but I decided I was intrigued enough to listen to it again. And by the time I listened to it all the way through uh, this last time, it's a keeper. I'm, I'm going to keep it at least for now. I, I may end, eventually end up getting tired of it, but it's just a very interesting thing. And yes, this kind of uh, skirts the line with music. This is a music channel. Uh, you know, spoken word stuff, but this, as I said, does have musical accompaniment in the background. So, in that respect, I consider this to be music. Uh, there's another CD I have that I will probably talk about at some point. It's called Lazy Boy TV. It's by a group called Lazy Boy. And uh, that's also kind of spoken word, but it's more neutral. It's not, you know, disturbing kind of stuff like this stuff is. Well, disturbing to a degree, not, not horribly disturbing. Not going to give you nightmares or anything, just uh, um, thought-provoking, 
is basically what this stuff is. It's, it, it'll make you think, it'll make you wonder, it'll make you feel. But yeah, it was a worthwhile listen for me. And uh, yeah, if you're prepared for something a little bit out there, uh, spoken word stuff, with uh, stuff that, as I said, will make you think, give this a try. It's very, very interesting. And now on to the second of two mystery CD grab bags. Hoping it's not all Christian music. Yeah, let's pray it's not all Christian music. A little joke for the Christians out there. I wouldn't joke with you if I didn't like you. Okay, peekaboo. And let's see what's in here. We have the Hoosiers worried about Ray. I I want to say I've heard of these guys. It is oh it's a CD single, three songs, along with a video on the enhanced portion of the CD, and it's still sealed in plastic. So it's a new, new album. I'm sure I've heard of the Hoosiers at some at some point. We have a band called Sleezer. Somehow I doubt these are Christian uh, artists. Yeah, the uh, album is called I Remember. And yeah, uh, never heard of them before. So it appears to be a, a self-released album. Copyright 2006, John Sleezer. So uh, yeah, be interesting to hear what that one's about. And we have Darden Smith, Midnight Train. Oh, it's, it looks like it's a promotional Oh yeah, it's kind of a yeah, pr promotional thing. It's a CD single, but it's got a whole bunch of interview clips on the back. Yeah, you can see the big long track listing of interview clips. So yeah, a couple of singles in here, so this bag's not going to take too long to listen to either. Uh, and then we have Mindy Smith, My Holiday. Another holiday CD. Yes, I am apparently going to be able to make a full, uh, or mostly full, bargain bag video out of My Holiday CDs. So yeah. So yeah, always up for holiday music that I'm not going to listen to until November. And we have Socialistic, apparently, and it, this looks like hip hop. Ghetto Guerrilla Tactics. But so yes, I have a feeling it is hip hop. So it will probably not be something that I will get into. And then we have Sonic Dream Collective. Uh, Gravity is the name of the album. Europe's hottest export is here. So this looks like uh, Europop. Uh, obviously it's Europop since it's Europe's hottest export. Interesting that it's their hottest export that I'd never heard of. That's why they call it a hype sticker. Uh, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to listen to. I'm always up for uh, Europop, synthpop kind of stuff, so it'll be interesting to hear. And then the final CD in this uh, grab bag. Here we go, Noah. I could send this one to you, too. It is apparently the full-length album, Invasion of the Booty Snatches. This this was perfectly placed. This is the best grand finale of this video, just like their CD single, Twirled At, was in that last, uh, that other bargain bag video. So, And yes, this CD does indeed have Twirled At on it. So, uh, well, 14 tracks. It's a booty snatching night. Dem Gators on, <laughs> Snatch and Booty, the t remix, Freak of the Week. This is going to be a, a, a hit parade from one end of the uh, album to the other. I can just tell. Okay, well, what do you think? Uh, this this was, well, it was an entertaining gra bargain bag, I guess. The first bag was a bit of a dud for me anyway, but the second bag kind of made up for it. But anyway, yes, that is Bargain Bag for the month of May 2020. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and healthy out there, everyone. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.